Today I'm going to show you how to get started with hole recognition in Fusion 360. Specifically in this case, um, I want to demonstrate its use uh, within a three-axis scenario. So we have a part with three different types of, uh, at least kind of four different types of holes. We've only set up templates for three different types of hole. Um, we've got a countersunk uh, tapped hole, a through hole, and then a counterboard um, thread milled bore with a through hole. So the first things you need to do is create a tool library and create a template folder. So if you go to the template library, if you've got cloud libraries enabled, then you'll be able to, you'll see cloud here, otherwise you'll just have local. And then right click on uh, the, the cloud or local folder and create a new folder and give it a name. You may want to organize your, so each one of these folders is going to be a library and you may want to organize your templates into individual libraries. So as you can see here, I've already created uh, three separate templates. Now these are specifically called whole templates as distinct from a standard template because these contain what's known as a whole signature and I'll go on to explain that shortly. So I'm just going to add, uh, I'll use this button here to add these three operations, spot, drill and tap to my browser just so I can show you how this is all set up. So I'm just going to quickly go through and select some geometry here. So this is spot drilling, so I'm going to pick the conical face here and the cylindrical face for the clearance drill and then the cylindrical face for the tapping. Now everything's already pre-configured, I've just set this up how you would any other drilling operation. Um, and then when you shift select that group of toolpaths and right click you see you have the traditional store as template option and store as whole template. Now this is effectively going to register what you can see is all the blue geometry elements here um, and store them with the template. The tools get stored but they're not bound to the template other than to say for the kind of tool type. So use a spot drill, use a drill and use a tap. The size of the diameter of those tools that will be used will depend on the hole that's been recognized and what tools are available in the target tool library. So here I'm going to go store as whole template. I'm going to pick my location in this case here 2020 webinar. I could overwrite if I've made an edit to it or I can create a, a new one. So we can go uh, my new tool, my new whole template and save that. Now I'm going to delete these toolpaths from my model. Okay, so when we run the whole recognition command, we can see that it's found five different groups of toolpaths here. So the first one, we can see highlighted in the graphics area, are my two M6 tapped or countersunk tapped holes. Then all of the quarter inch through holes it's picked up on those two bores in the center and there's no valid, well, there's no obvious solution from all the available um, templates to apply to these. So and we don't actually want to um, drill or tap them in any way. So they're set to ignore. And then it's picked up on these hole features here. It's a countersunk with a through hole. Um, and it's picked up on my custom hole template for that. But when we expand this out, we can see that there's several other options as well. Now, we can control which templates are available um, by filtering, effectively, um, was effectively filtering. If you select and enable the li template library folder, then we can browse to a specific folder. And then when we come back to our whole groups, we can see everything's been reset. And now we can only pick from either just a, a simple drill, um, which is kind of just an overall always available hole template, or countersink drill tap, or my new hole template, which is the one that I just selected. We can override um, the thread type if we want, depending on, it will do its level best to, to um, associate the hole template, or the tools that are available rather in your tool library, to the whole geometry that is detected 
and it, but if not you can override it. So this one's going to be spot drill through hole and then here we can see we've just got M14. There were uh, quite a few additional templates in here before we focused the hole recognition tool on just my library folder. We can also get it to only look at one or several or at least a focused view of tool libraries. So in this case here I've only enabled my uh, December 2020 webinar and I've specifically included all of the tools that I've got in my machine, in my pretend machine, and I've made that default. So every time I um, load up the whole recognition tool, it's going to only enable that tool library. So when I click OK, that's going to generate all my toolpaths. Um, this one's thrown a little area that there's a bug here because of uh, a special um, parameter I'm using. And we just have a quick look. We can see that I'm using whole top diameter um, times 1.05. So I want my chamfer diameter to be 5% larger than whatever the whole top diameter is. It's not. It will calculate that just fine when you click OK, but for whatever reason it's not picking up the top diameter of that hole until you edit it. So there we have it. Now what happens if there's a change to the model? Um, we'll jump back into design here and I'm going to edit my hole and choose um, we're going to go with 5mm and it's picked up on M508 we can switch back to manufacture and rather than selecting regenerate we're going to edit this and we can see that there's some warnings here saying this group shares operations with another group so previously we only had five groups now we've got six and we can see that it's ident correctly identified that these two holes are different to one another so all we need to do here is switch this out um, from keep existing to reapply the whole template but this time it's picking up correctly an M5 by 0.8 pitch instead of an M6 by 1. So we click OK it's going to add some additional toolpaths in here and we just need to regenerate this one here. You can actually just double click on this and then right click and go OK and it will do the same thing. So now we've got two separate tapping toolpaths, two different tool diameters and the same with the drills. But what if we end up with, so if we go back and we change this hole back to an M6, what happens then? So we went from two separate holes to two of the same. So if we edit this, we can see that it's still got the individual groups and it's picked up on, uh, we can have keep existing or we could go with um, can sync drill tap and it's going to go M6 by 1 but we also have this new option in here so combine with 1 so it's going to combine group 5 with group 1 if we do that and then click OK <coughs> just update those two there and then when we come back in and edit this we can see now we've only got 5 groups so it's merged those two holes back into one hole signature group effectively. So yeah, just to confirm we've got these all these different hole signatures here on the right hand side and that's how um, toolpath templates, hole templates get applied. So it's pretty straightforward but I strongly recommend to get the most out of this and have it behaving how you'd expect to not use the sample hole templates. Create your own based on your own tools and you'll get some really nice results and super fast programming of holes in Fusion 360. Cheers for tuning in. Hopefully that uh, was helpful. If you've got any questions or comments, please fire away in the comments section below. Have a good day. Bye.